Welcome to the coffee shop, everybody. This is the final episode of this lesson plan that uh, I did with a Discord group that is called Trade with Confidence. You can get a link to the Discord in the description below. And in this video today, I'm going to show you secrets of the Heiken Ashi Algo. A lot of people ask the question, which moving average should I use and why? We'll answer that in today's video. about recent candles and how they're changing in volatility. Because an SMA is looking at a long length of candles and, and calculating all of those moves. An EMA is concentrating more on the most recent one, even though it's looking at, let's say the last 50, SMA is looking at the last 50, it's considering more, the EMA is considering more of the last 10% of the candles, depending on the calculation. So when volatility starts changing a little bit more and more, that's why the EMA looks like it's moving faster. No, it's just more reactive. It's not faster, it's just more reactive because there'll be times where you put an EMA and SMA on your chart and they both do exactly the same thing within pennies. And it, those pennies mean nothing. They won't cover your spread. Um, so EMAs is when you know you're stepping into high volatility. Uh, if you're stepping into like, you know, like open market session, that's where you start using an EMA. Also, if you're trading crypto and only crypto, I would only use an EMA. I would not use an SMA, period. Because again, crypto is very, very high volatility. If you're trading something like indices, bonds, or whatever, there's no reason to use an EMA. It's pointless. Like, it's just completely pointless. You don't need to know about that much faster of a move because it's not going to matter, you know? So um, it would be easier for you to develop a strategy that was related to SMAs in those regards. But EMAs are literally when volume, volatility, orders, when things are just really going nuts, when there's a lot of market manipulation, okay? A lot, a lot of uncertainties. That's where EMA comes in over SMA, okay? Um, what's up, Carlos? Uh, what? <laughs> you like only 10 seconds? You suck, dude. All right, so EMA or SMA, let me see. What is RSI tracking? Why do we need it? Okay. Uh, I like this question. This is a question that somebody sent me, uh, a little private message, I guess you could say. In the algo, we've got this thing called RSI tracking. All right, actually, I could turn this off now. I don't need to have this on here. There, bye-bye. So RSI tracking comes in really handy, right? Uh, let's get rid of the candles. Turn on the RSI tracking, okay? And this. So now, and, and let me turn off the midline too. Let me see if I can turn this off. There. So now RSI tracking, right? It's this line that's generated here. And it's stuck to the current value of the RSI as it's forming. Okay? As it's forming. See, every time it changes, it stays with the RSI. This is really, really important. The reason for this is because, uh, let's say you are trading the RSI. And this, this is a, uh, a, tr uh, a trading strategy that some people use, right? Uh, let's say you're using the RSI and you're trading it like price action. You gotta move down, a move up, and this high broke this previous low. So you're using structure on your RSI, right? That means this high did not break this low. So I'm looking for when the RSI breaks that. It's, a, it's an invalid high, right? It doesn't break it. So there isn't enough move here. You can literally use the RSI like price action. So when the RSI starts coming to this point, I'm waiting for price, right, to be above the closing value somewhere. I'm just waiting for it to happen. I, I don't really care about, you know, where it is here. I care about the momentum, right? I want to know, do I have more momentum here than I had here? If I do, then I am now scalping long, okay? I'm just going to kind of do this. I broke it, right? Every time the RSI comes above that level, I'm entering a trade, right? I'm entering long. Okay, uh, and it's simply a, a, an easier way to show you, do you have a value higher than your previous structure, okay? And you get to track it, like where was it compared to previous structure? Just kind of drawing that out. And you see that you, you just start entering long because you broke above that. You can't really see that unless you draw the line. This is just a way for you to draw the line for you automatically. And as soon as you break it, you scalp, you take your profits, you pull out. 
right? If it breaks it again, you scalp, you take your profits, you pull out. And if it continues breaking above it, you keep scalping long, you take your profits and you break and you know, you just get out. Now, obviously this only works on, uh, this works best on false highs, right? I wouldn't use it on this one. I'd be using it on this one, not this one, right? Um, and obviously it works on false lows as well. Uh, I don't really have a false low here right now and I don't really see any. So, I mean, I just want to show you this one live. I'm glad that it actually came up like that, but that's, that's the reason for using this. If you want to use the RSI and its position as a, uh, uh, a tracking method, right? You see, it's trying to create a low right there and it already created a high right here. Okay. So as the RSI breaks these levels, I want to see, you know, like, what is it doing? Breaks below this. Nope, that's not a valid low. This is a valid high right here, right? It's a valid high, broke this little swing low, so I would scalp short from here. I'd be looking to take shorts, right? Every time it pulls back, if it touches this level, I'm going to enter another short position and push short again. Let's see if it comes up here, right? As it closes below it. Let's wait for a second. Closes below, another short right there. Right. And that's just, that's like super micro macro miniature quantum mania scalping. So that's the purpose of the RSI tracking. Okay. There you go. How's it? How you like that one? Uh, let's see. Uh, why use the RSI MA 14 over 50? Okay. So somebody sent me a message a while ago and they were asking about, uh, the RSI moving average, right? And the fact that you can adjust its value to, you know, you can use a four, a nine, you can use a 50, right? Why use the 50? Okay, simple enough. Uh, it's all about looking at the whatever term trend, right? So let's say you put a, I don't know, smooth, right? Smooth moving average. All right, there we go. I'll put two of them on the chart. Okay, we'll open one up. Let's say that I'm using a, uh, I don't know, I'm using a 20 period, right? Let's just assume I'm using a 20 period. And I also use a 50 period, okay? Do that over here. So if my price, right, if my price is below the 50, I want my RSI to be below its 50. If I'm ever crossing the 50, right, but I'm not crossing it with my price, then I am not considering this a termination of the trend. It's only when I'm above the 50 here, right? I'm above the 50 here and I'm above the 50 here while the moving averages are upside down. Then I consider that you have broken, like your RSI has already broken its 50 last positions, right? It's already broken its 50 last positions and price has done the same thing, okay? This would be a, uh, a, a good way to analyze, right? That your downtrend is over, right? And that you have to wait for a new trend. And then what ends up happening is you end up getting a reversal. Like you got a low here and a higher low there. Same thing on the RSI. Um, let me just kind of take that out. So again, it breaks above a second time and the RSI is already above, right? It's already above its 50 period moving average. So it's really about comparing where the RSI is compared to its last 50 positions and where price action is compared to its last 50 positions. Anytime they match each other, okay? They don't have to cross at the same time. They simply have to match each other that's when you know you have that turn that trend uh that time frame trend right so we're talking about the long term short term okay i'm above my uh 14 period moving average right i don't know if i'm above the 14 period moving average here because i don't have one in here so i mean i could put one in right just kind of let's see where we are here i'm pretty sure i am above it right uh here switch that 14 and we're looking here Right. So, yes, we are. I've closed above it. I've closed above both. So this is telling me I've 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 now gone against my short term. I've gone against my short term. So for the short term, my short term trend is over my short term. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, downtrend is over. Consider this. You have a downtrend for the long term. 
you have a downtrend for the short term. Okay, we'll do this. And this is essentially like analyzing two time frames on one chart. Long term, short term. Okay, 50, 14. All right. If you closed above your short term, then that means your short term trend is over. So that means, okay, great. My short term trend, my short term trend is flat. But then later on, you're, you, I mean, that means at this point in time, your overall trend, your overall, the long term trend is still in a downtrend. And later on, you close above that and the RSI matches. That now tells you that your long term trend is also now flat. And now you need to find a new set of a trend. Okay. I closed above the 50 and the 14. It doesn't matter that they're upside down or right side up, but I have effectively closed above both the 15 and 14. So I, at this point, I have an uptrend. That's it. This is the uh, termination of short term, termination of long term. Short term is now pulling in, right? And you, you, again, you closed over both of them. You closed over both of them. You have two indications telling you, I no longer have the overall downtrend. I don't have that anymore. What I do have, however, is I'm closing above my 14, right? I'm closing above my uh, average and my price closed above both averages. So you have everything you need to tell you, I am now going to only look for long trades, right? And if you look what happens forward on the chart, right? You have better long moves, right? You have better long moves than you have short moves, short pullbacks, short pullbacks, long pullbacks, right? There you go. That's it. So that's the purpose of setting a longer uh, period moving average on your RSI. 50 period, 14 period, whatever you want to use. You could take uh, multiples of the algo, layer them over each other, or put a regular um, RSI moving average, put it on here and set uh, more than one moving average on it if you want. You know, put a 14, put a 50. Now, the reason I'm using, uh, uh, you know, 20 to 50 here is only because I was using a 50 here, which means the other comparison I would use is a 20 if I ever wanted to do that. Always use the same moving average length here that you are using here for your triggers. If you only want to take short-term moves, then this has to be matching to your short-term moving average. My short-term here is 20. This has to be 20. If my short-term was 50, then this has to be 50. And then my other move, moving averages have to be longer than that. And uh, I think that covers everything, right? That we covered everything, peeps. All right. So that was a whole lot. Like from 9 a.m., it's exactly 11 o'clock. Perfect timing, two hour session. Uh, this is usually what students pay for. You guys got this for free. This is a lot of information. Let me take a sip of my hot tea, my devil's elixir. Right. Let me stop the recording. This was a lot of fun. Uh, so for everyone who has watched this entire nine part lesson plan, you guys should now be masters at trading. Uh, on any time frame. So I want to thank everybody for coming through and watching this one. Join the Discord below. Join the uh, website, coffeeshopcrypto.net, and you'll get a lot of information just like this without having to wait for new videos. And you'll be able to get a lot of one-on-one -on -one, uh, help with any of your day trading questions. So peace out.